Okay, so let's talk a little more about methods. I want to go over some examples here. So I'm going to give a couple example methods. So first off, uh, I'm going to write a little method here. Let's call it uh, string cap chop. So we're going to return a string, uh, string cap chop. And what this is going to do is this is going to input some string for our sentence and then some int x. And what it's going to do is cut off the first x uh, characters in the sentence and then uppercase the rest and return the new one. So if I send it, you know, like Batman, and I say let's cut off the first two letters, it's going to send you T-Man in all caps. Okay, so we're going to have some methods like this that are in, in uh, a couple different steps like that. So let's say our answer is going to be sentence.substring, sentence.substring, uh, let's say x. So this just starts, uh, basically it goes from spot x to the end. So it's going to have the effect of getting rid of the first x characters. And then we're going to make it to uppercase. So we're going to change answer to be what it was before, dot to uppercase. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and return that answer at the end. All right. So with that in mind, uh, here's what that's going to look like. So let's try calling this method. So we'll just put it inside a print line so we can see. So we call the method uh, string cap chop. By the way, method names are usually lowercase. I should have used that there. Um, the name of your class is uppercase. Method names are lowercase, like a variable. We send a sentence and then an int. So when I want to call this, I'll call string cap chop. And I'll send it a sentence. Let's call bat, oops, Batman the Dark Knight. And we're going to cut off, let's say, the first two letters. So that should give me everything. Oops, I need one more. So that should give me everything else in here. Um, it's into the two, converted that, everything else in there to uppercase. Okay, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. Great. So another thing you might ask is, is, is there a way to have more than one return statement? Like, could we just have if statements and else statements to return in multiple cases? And the answer, of course, is yes. So let's say, for example, um, we want to write the absolute value method. Uh, let's, yeah, that'll be fine. So public static. Uh, and this, let's just do, uh, let's do this. Boom, yeah, we'll do absolute value. Okay, so into abs value. This is, by the way, how the absolute value works in the quick reference guide. So this is going to take in some int uh, number right there. And this method just returns the absolute value of num. Okay, so uh, if num is a positive number, you'll just return that number, right? If num is bigger than or equal, oops, the zero, then in that case, you will just return that number. Okay, and if it's a negative number, we want to return the positive version. So if num is less than zero, I'm going to show you this on accident. Yeah, if num is less than zero, then I'm going to go ahead and return uh, negative one times num. Now, when you write this code, you're going to see first off that it doesn't compile. Um, and it says it's missing a return statement. Because what Java does, again, Java's not looking for these. Uh, it's not trying to figure out the logic and say, okay, it either goes through here or it goes through here. Java just looks and says, hey, maybe it doesn't go through this if, or it doesn't go through this if. So you need to make sure your method must return something in all cases. If you are not, it's going to give you this error. And the easy way around that is just to do an else. So this is the beauty of an else statement. So by having an else, it will always go through one of these two. So it'll either go through the first if statement or it'll go through the else. And in each of these cases, it's going to return something. Um, so that's kind of what's going on here. Okay, so we see that. Oh, I didn't even compile. I ran it. Uh, but anyway, we'll see that that compiles. Okay, so those are some example methods there. Um, I want to show you something here. So we can call this method by just printing it. So we can call the method uh, directly from a print line. Obviously, you could save it as a variable, kind of like we did up here with their average. But you could just print out, like we've done, so some the print line. We can print out like the absolute, I don't remember what I called it, abs value. Okay, so we can print out the absolute value of negative 5. Okay, and what this does is this prints out whatever the method returns. Okay, so when I compile this and run it, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Now you might wonder, what happens if you print out a void method? So if you print out system.out.println, let's just call the one directly below this, my name. Now, 
you can think about this for a minute, but hopefully you come to the conclusion that this won't work. And in fact, when you try and compile your code, it doesn't compile. And it gives you this error that the void type is not allowed. Um, and that makes sense, right? Because you're saying, I'm going to print out whatever it returns, but this doesn't return anything. So how can you print out nothing? Because nothing is getting returned. So this doesn't compile since nothing is returned. Okay, so I just want to be aware that you might get that error. Uh, you might try and call a method inside there. You have to call it separately. You can't call it inside a print statement like that. Okay, um, so that was the main thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, one thing also is that if you declare variables inside your main, they cannot be accessed in other methods. And this is consistent with our rules for while loops and if statements and for loops, right? So if we set up like, let's say, uh, int gravel. Gravel, by the way, is in his 10th year at heart, so we'll just do int gravel equals 10. If you try and access this variable somewhere else, so say I try and access it here, Java again will not let this compile. It says it can't be found. Um, it cannot find this symbol. So it can't find this because it's in a different method. Oh boy. And that follows the same logic as before, because when we declare this variable inside a set of squigglies, so say inside this set of squigglies for my main method, I can't access it outside that set of squigglies. And the same logic is true the other way. If I declare a variable down here, um, like this average, I can't access that average variable inside somewhere else either. So um, that, that's, I think, worth noting is that those variables do not carry over. If you want to send a variable from one method to another, you've got to send it as an input. If you want a variable to go from one method to another, you must send it as an input. Okay. And, and one thing also I wanted to point out, like the variables that are in a different method are actually different. So this is a this is kind of something they actually do try and trick you with on the AP test. Let's say we write a method down here that's like a changer method. So let's say uh, we're going to public static, uh, even if we have it be int changer, uh, and we're going to take in some int y, and we're just going to set that y to be 60. So that's about Mr. Gravel's age. And then what we're going to do after that is just return that new age. Okay, so now you might be wondering what happens if now I call changer of y and then I try and print out Gravel. Oops. So you might think that Gravel is going to be changed to y, but it's actually not. Um, oh yeah, good thing I'm stupid here. So let's go ahead and fix that. But when we go ahead and compile our code and run our code, you're going to see it still has a value of 10. So even though I took Gravel and I sent it down here, what it did is it just basically sent over the value 10. This set y to be 10. And when you do y equals 60, this changes y. It's not inextricably linked to that other Gravel and uh, that other variable in main. It only changes this variable. So it only changes this variable, uh, not the one in main. Even though you're returning it and even though you send it as one like that, because you're just changing y and not Gravel, this becomes unchanged. Um, so the Gravel variable gets changed, or Gravel variable does not get changed, only the Y. If you actually wanted to change Gravel, you would have to set, so if you wanted to change it, you would have to set the variable equal to whatever the method returned, and that's how you would go about doing that. Okay, um, the only other thing I wanted to do now was look at the quick reference guide. As you guys saw, this was a little complex before. See, um, So the quick reference guide here, when you have this, this is just a list of methods. So when you look down at the math class, they didn't put the word public on here, but the public static int abs is saying your absolute value method inputs an int and returns an int. Your pow method inputs two doubles and returns a double. The random method takes no inputs and returns a double. Even when we look at our string class, the same thing, right? Substring uh, inputs two ints and returns a string. Index of inputs a string, returns an int. Dot equals inputs a string and returns a boolean. So those are all examples of methods. And now that we know about inputs and outputs, um, I think that's something that should be uh, hopefully make a little more sense to you. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bring questions to class. I'll see you.